the movie begins by recounting an ancient Japanese folktale. In the past, Japan was filled with witches, demons, and honorable samurai. During this era, Emperor Shogun Tsunayoshi governed all of Japan, overseeing a land divided into numerous provinces that frequently clashed with one another. These provinces upheld various traditions, including the strict prohibition against granting nobility to foreigners or those of mixed heritage. For samurai, failure to protect their master would result in the loss of their esteemed status as samurai. They would then be demoted to the rank of ronin, warriors who had either lost or been separated from their lord. However, to truly understand the legend of the 47 ronin, one must delve into the story that lies at its core. The tale begins with a young boy named Kai fleeing through the woods in fear. With his origin a mystery to all, locals believe he was raised by dark entities deep within the Tengu forest. Their names were Morpheus, Trinity, and Bill. Eventually, Kai collapses near a creek in Ako province where a group of samurai stumble upon him. One of them, Oishi, notices strange claw marks on the back of Kai's head. This makes him suspect that the boy is linked to sinister forces or he's been jacking in and tries to attack him. But before he can do so, the leader of Ako, Lord Asaon, arrives and takes Kai away. Back in their province, Lord Asano allows Kai to live in a modest hut within his territory. He also takes care of the boy by providing him with food and other amenities. Over time, Kai forms a close relationship with Lord Asano's daughter, Mika. But their love is complicated due to their differences in status, which bars Kai from marrying into the noble class. The other samurai also look down upon him due to his mixed heritage, derogatorily referring to him as a half-breed. He's not the one. He is only one half. Ten years pass, and Kai has now become an adult. One day, the samurai find themselves deep in the forest, hunting down the bull demon. This six-eyed beast is so big and powerful that it easily throws away the horses coming in its way. It then goes on a rampage through the forest and corners a samurai named Yasuno. But before it can finish him off, Kai arrives to the rescue and thrusts his sword into the creature's chest, finally killing it. Following the bull's defeat, Kai proceeds to check on Yasuno, but the latter belittles him harshly. He goes on to express his disgust, stating he would rather face death at the hands of the bull than accept help from someone of mixed blood. Moments later, Later, Lord Asano and Oishi arrive, offering praise to Yasuno for supposedly killing the bull. The samurai also doesn't reveal the truth, and he acts like he was the one who got the job done. However, when Oishi observes Kai's hands, he realizes that it was him who defeated the bull. Those hands have definitely recently handled huge balls. In the meantime, Kai spots a unique white fox in the distance, with one eye shining gold and the other blue. However, he doesn't pay much attention to it, and simply heads back to his hut. Once back at the kingdom, Lord Asano meets with Mika for an important conversation. He reveals that the Emperor Shogun has chosen Akko Province for the annual fighting tournament, where they will confront their rivals from Nagato Province, led by Lord Kira. This will be a very important tournament for them, and they must do everything in their power to win. Later that same night, Mika sneaks out of her kingdom to visit Kai at his hut. She notices a wound on his back and tries to tend to it, but he insists that she return home. Despite their deep feelings for each other, Kai acknowledges that his mixed heritage and Mika's royal lineage stands as an undeniable obstacle between them. Elsewhere, the peculiar white fox transforms and unveils her true form as a stunning woman named Mizuki. Hmm, maybe furries have a point. She is actually a magician loyal to Lord Kira. The day before the tournament, both Emperor Shogun and Lord Kira make their way to Ako province. Lord Asano and his samurai organize a festive gathering to formally greet the emperor. Meanwhile, Kai secretly watches the ceremony unfold from within the kingdom. During this, he catches sight of a woman whose eyes are the distinctive blend of blue and gold as seen in the white fox. Kai then confides in Oishi, revealing his suspicion that one of Lord Kira's concubines is a witch with mystical powers. However, the samurai dismisses his concerns, reminding him that only demons can recognize a witch's true identity. Kai's got that demon in him. The following day, as the tournament is about to begin, the fighter representing Lord Kira's province comes onto the field. Yasuno is chosen to represent the Ako province, and he is currently meditating in his room. Just then, the mysterious white fox shows up and renders him unconscious with a spell. He is found in this state a few minutes later by Oishi's son, Chikara, and Kai. With time running out for the tournament, the two fear that Lord Asano will be humiliated if they fail to present a fighter. Thus, Kai decides to go to the battlefield himself. He then dons the samurai armor and hides his identity behind an iron helmet. Unfortunately, during the intense battle, Kai faces a relentless onslaught from Lord Kira's fighter. He is then thrown into the air, which results in his mask coming off. The entire audience is shocked to learn that it was Kai fighting under the armor all along. Emperor Shogun also realizes that he's not a samurai, so he orders the other fighters to 
execute him. But before our hero can be finished off, Mika leaps to save him. Lord Asano then pleads for forgiveness and takes full responsibility for the incident. So the Emperor lessens the punishment to a public beating. That night, Mizuki senses Lord Asano's vulnerability and discusses her plans to seize control of Akko. She then performs a magical ritual on Lord Kira and extracts a purple liquid from him. Bushi. With a sinister whisper, she transforms the liquid into a poisonous spider, which also has six eyes. This cheeky spider slowly goes to Lord Asano and infects him with its poison. As a result, the old man begins to hallucinate his daughter, Mika, being under attack by Lord Kira. Reacting instinctively, he wields his sword to defend her. Unaware that his actions are real, while the rest is an illusion, he almost hurts the man, but the other samurai quickly restrain him. Kira then starts playing the victim and acts traumatized. After the commotion settles down, Oishi notices some kind of fog lifting from Asano's eyes. In the aftermath of this incident, Emperor Shogun gives Asano the death penalty due to his unprovoked attack on a guest, but he is allowed to commit the unthinkable by thrusting a sword into his own stomach. This will apparently help regain his honor. Lord Asano accepts the punishment and asks Oishi to act as his second. He also bids farewell to his daughter before committing seppuku. Following the events, the Emperor Shogun declares the Akko Samurai as Ronin, stripping them of their former status. He also commands Mika to wed Lord Kira and stay as a couple. As the days pass, Kira seizes control of the province and expels all the samurai. He also banishes Kai to servitude on Dutch Island as a slave and directs his samurai to confine Oishi to a pit. The movie then cuts to a year later. Oishi is released from prison and exiled to a distant village where he reunites with his wife and their son Chikara. They inform him of Lord Kira's marriage to Mika and Kai's enslavement on Dutch Island. In response, Oishi tasks Chikara with gathering three horses and rallying the remaining ronin to assemble at the Black Lake. He then sets off to Dutch Island to save his long-lost bud. Upon his arrival, Oishi notices Kai engaging in an intense duel. Turns out he has become a fighter in this part of the world, a very ruthless one at that. Oishi later meets him and asks him to join him in their mission. He says that they have to eliminate Lord Kira and take their land back from him. At first, Kai refuses, saying he doesn't want to go back to their village. But when Oishi explains that Mika urgently needs him, he says, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. The two then sneak out to the facility and successfully flee the island. During their meeting with the remaining Ronin, Oishi says that he has a plan to take down Kira, but for that, he needs all of the Ronin to fight together with all their might. He also highlights the dangers that they will be facing throughout their journey, claiming that they might even die. However, the men are determined to fight for their land and take it back after the short speech. Oishi consults a map and plans to lead them to Uetsu Village. This village is famous for making swords, and it is exactly what they need right now. He then assigns a Ronin named Isogai to infiltrate the shrine in Lord Kira's palace to gather crucial information. Elsewhere, Lord Kira gets the news that Oishi has been released from prison and is now planning to retaliate. This makes him nervous, so he immediately orders Mizuki to eliminate the threat. Elsewhere, Oishi and the Ronin arrive at Uetsu Village, where they encounter a bunch of enemies. But Kai quickly takes them down with his impressive skills, allowing the group to spend the night in the village. Later, Oishi explains that they sadly won't find any weapons here, as Kira has taken over the village. He claims that they will never be able to get their land back without any weapons. However, Kai has an idea in mind. He proposes that they venture into the heart of the Tengu forest, where they can acquire swords. The others ask how he knows about it, and Kai reveals that he was brought up by a demonic figure in the forest, who granted him combat skills and mystical knowledge. My dad was a Demon. Kai claims that he knows magic, but will only use it in dire circumstances. Hearing all this, Oishi is a bit perplexed, but he agrees to set off for the Tengu Forest. In the meantime, Isogai successfully infiltrates Lord Kira's palace, where he encounters Mizuki, disguised as a comfort woman. The following day, our heroes arrive at the Tengu Forest and discover an ancient temple where Kai once lived. He then leads Oishi inside, while the remaining Ronin decide to wait. Along the way, Kai warns his friend against drawing his sword, even in the face of danger. Kai's gonna get everyone killed. Inside the temple, they witness the Tengu bowing before a large statue. Kai then goes to a secret chamber alone, where a sword is lodged. He is soon visited by a Tengu god, who reveals Kai's origins as the child of farmers and an Englishman. It turns out that his family were rejected by the community, and they were taken in by the Tengu god for training in the temple. Kai then asserts that he's come here to retrieve the sword, but the Tengu god says that he has to earn it. Outside, the rest of the Ronin grow restless, as they believe Kai 
has led them to a trap. So, they enter the cave and immediately bring out their swords. Unfortunately, this proves to be a fatal decision as the Tengu people start attacking them ruthlessly. Oishi, who is observing all this, starts hearing voices in his head as well. The voice asks him to bring out his sword and help his friends. However, Oishi remains resolute in his decision and sadly watches his friends die one after another. Way to go, Kai. Inside the chamber, Kai engages in a duel with the Tengu god and surprisingly manages to defeat him using his shadow techniques. This earns him the respect of the god as well as the sword. I like the cut of your jib, Keanu. Outside, Oishi notices that all the ronin have been seemingly replaced by Tengu swords. This makes him realize that he was hallucinating all this time and the whole scenario was only a test to check his patience. After gathering the swords, the two friends then exit the temple. Kai then demonstrates the power of the Tengu sword by effortlessly slicing through tree trunks. Still couldn't put a dent in my dad's demon dick. Once the group reaches the Uetsu village, Isogai informs them that Lord Kira is planning to visit his ancestral shrine later that evening. He suggests that they all sneak into the place and finish him off. Oishi is immediately on board with the plan, but he doesn't realize the same fog lifting over Isogai's eyes. That night, the ronin slowly make their way towards the shrine. They spot Lord Kira in prayer and prepare to attack, but this is when Isogai abruptly falls ill and collapses. It turns out the entire thing was a setup. Mizuki then shows up and douses all the ronin in fire with just a mere gesture of her hands. This kills many men, but Oishi and a few others somehow manage to escape. When the flames die down, Mizuki, assuming Oishi died in the fire, takes his sword and gives it to Lord Kira. The following day, Kai and Chikara encounter a group of dancers bound for Lord Kira's palace. Realizing that it might be an opportunity to infiltrate the place, they ask the dancers to hide the ronin amidst the group. The dancers are reluctant at first, as it is a dangerous mission. But upon much persuasion and Keanu's raw machismo charm, they agree. It is then revealed that Kira and Mika are finally getting married, so there will be a huge feast in their name. In the next scene, we are taken to the night of the wedding. Oishi and several ronin infiltrate the palace disguised as dancers, while others stealthily dispatch Lord Kira's guards. However, during Oishi's performance, a palace guard exposes his disguise by shooting an arrow at him. This causes a fight to break out between the two parties, but our heroes eventually manage to defeat the enemies. Witnessing the chaos, Lord Kira tries to run away with Mika, but she breaks free from him and goes in a separate direction. She eventually reunites with her love, Kai, and they share a heartfelt embrace. However, their emotional moment doesn't last long, as they are soon interrupted by Mizuki in her white dragon form. A fierce battle then ensues between her and Kai, with both of them appearing equally matched. She spits fire at him, but he manages to deflect it with his Tengu sword. In the end, Kai eventually defeats her by plunging the sword right through her head. On the other hand, Oishi and Lord Kira come face to face and engage in a duel of their own. This one, however, doesn't last long, as Oishi, filled with vengeance, manages to kill the cruel lord with a decisive blow. Oishi then decapitates him and takes his head outside as a souvenir. He displays it in front of the fighting crowd, causing them to immediately stop. The men who were once working for Kira now bow down in respect and praise their new lord. The following day, Oishi and his remaining 47 ronin travel to Akko to pay homage at Lord Asano's grave. There, they are confronted by an enraged shogun who condemns their actions and announces that they will all be hanged. However, out of respect for Lord Asano, he changes his stance and offers them the self-kill option. What a nice guy. As the group is preparing for their execution, Kai vows to reunite with Mika. He says that they are destined to get married. Perhaps in the next life. The Ronins then get ready for their demise, but just then, the Shogun intervenes and spares Chikara. He reasons that the boy is needed for the continuity of Oishi's lineage. As for the other 46 Ronin, they stab themselves and die together in solidarity. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.